what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of, the founder of P90X, Tony Horton. He talked about, you know, Chris, what I love talking about is the big challenges, you know, because we're all fighting through different challenges from even early age. He made money as a street mime. That's how he made money, uh, food and rent money. He put his hat on the street and he would do street mining. That's how he made money early on before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars with P90X. Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark talked about growing her company to 20 million with five people early on then selling to Disney. But more impressively, she beat cancer twice. Uh, Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. There's many more. Check out inspiredinsider.com. This episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Um, at Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners. And we do that because we help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. I know Chris is a big advocate of podcasting. He's a great podcast. You can check it out. I've listened to many episodes. Um, but for me, Chris, podcasting is much more personal. It's not just about business. It was inspired by my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor. And him and his brother were concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and they're the only members of their families to survive. And his words and legacy live on. And crazy stories. If you go to my About page on Inspired Insider, I actually... Um, have a video. Um, there's a short video and then there's a long video down. You can listen to his whole story, you know, really crazy stuff he had to endure. Um, but the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him and, you know, his legacy lives on because of that interview. And so I feel like the work I'm doing with the podcast, Chris, the work you're doing with your podcast um, and, you know, the, the companies that we help launch a podcast are really leaving a legacy of knowledge and for themselves. So I personally credit podcasting the best thing I've done for my business and my life and my relationships. We take off 99% of the work so your business can actually focus on the best use of your time, which is relationships and connecting to those relationships. So, um, you know, we have clients that range from a Berkshire Hathaway company to lawyers, consultants, SaaS companies, you name it. Um, and our team has been working with podcasters, you know, since 2009. So I think if you have a business, whether you use this or not, you should have a podcast, period. Um, if you have questions, support at rise25media.com or go to rise25.com. Check out more. Um, thank you. I'm excited to, to introduce today's guest. We have Chris Martinez, founder of Dude, and you can find them at dudeagency.io. They help digital agencies take on more clients and scale up with their flat rate unlimited web design and development using their team in Tijuana, Mexico. And they're obsessed with hitting deadlines and helping agencies grow. They give you all the benefits. I love this part, Chris. You know, they give you all the benefits of outsourcing without the downsides. And we know, you know, st you know staying up till one, not hearing back, all those communication issues, you're, you help solve those for companies, uh, for agencies. And they work with all types of platforms, WordPress, Shopify, ClickFunnels, Leadpages, Aweber, Webflow, many more. It just depends on your needs. You know, Chris, thanks for joining me. Ah, thank you so much for that introduction. I always ask two things. One, um, since Inspired Insider, what's been the, one of the lowest moments and how you push through? And then on the other side of things, what's been a really proud moment for you and um, what that looks like? Uh, two very, very good questions. Yes. Uh, lowest moment. Um, and it could be business related. Like I know we talked about a lot of tough childhood stuff and your, your dad, which is, you know, incomparable to like, you know, what in business, but you know, it could be just a big, big low moment or challenge. Well, this is the thing, you know, like I feel like I'm a pretty tough guy, right? And I can get through pretty much anything. And the reason that I've been able to develop this toughness is because of all of the challenges that I had when I was a kid and uh, well, and a young adult too, you know? So like going through those things shaped me and gave me the strength to persevere through a lot of the crap that we had to deal with, you know, growing a business. Any entrepreneur will tell you 
that there is always something, some, something's broken, something needs to be fixed, some challenge, um, unforeseen challenge. Um, so there's always something that we have to overcome. And so, you know, when it comes to some of my biggest or my, my one biggest obstacle, uh, I, I would have to go back to, you know, a couple of years after my dad died, I was broke, no money. Um, you know, I, I was just on the verge of getting a job and I just had a breakdown, you know, like I was just so angry inside and it was just a moment, something super stupid set me off. And I would just, I was just so furious that I was walking around the neighborhood, chain smoking, trying to get out, get rid of this anger. And I just couldn't see straight. I was so angry. I couldn't see straight. And, um, and then I realized, you know, like, I don't want to live like this. Like, I don't like this person that I am and I need to figure out a way uh, of how to deal with this. And so I reached out to a therapist and um, well, I made the decision at that time to reach out to a therapist. That was the big thing. It's just admitting to yourself, I need help. Because I think a lot of guys try and fix everything on their own because we're stupid and pigheaded. And um, this is one area that I did not have a clue about and I needed help. So the first step was just admitting that I needed somebody to help me because I, I wasn't going to live like this. I don't think that I would live much. I wouldn't be able to live much longer had I not gotten some help. And so I made the decision that I was going to find a therapist. And back in the day, you know, I went on Google and I just started dialing, you know, cause I didn't know who to look for. Just started dialing, you know? And then, uh, the first person who called me back was this woman named Susan. She was based out of Manhattan beach. She was an amazing, uh, she is an amazing human being. Um, I'm still in contact with her. We talk at least like once a year or message. And so, um, you know, I went to that appointment for therapy and uh, didn't know what to expect. It was an intro appointment, so you don't really get into much deep stuff. And at first, I didn't really like her. But then as I started Why? to think about it more, because she's a ball buster, man. Yeah. You know, like I can be fairly stubborn. And at that time, I was you definitely like that. Exactly. Like and the, the moment that I realized how much I needed her. We were talking about, I was talking about something. I was, you know, blaming everybody for my problems or whatever that, that whatever in that moment was bothering me. And she's listening, you know, being very, um, just, just listening, right? Which is rare. How many people don't have anybody to listen? So she's just listening. And then at the end, she's like, well, you know, how's that working out for you? I said, mm. this is the way that it is or something like that. And I can't change that. And she's like, how's that working out for you? And I was like, you fucking bitch. How dare you say that to me? <laughs> it's amazing how one sentence is. Yeah. yeah. I'll never forget it. And then I walked away from that. And I was like, she is 100% right. You know, like, I'm doing it so wrong. Yeah. It's funny, you know, Chris, you know, that's what my wife does. She's a child psychologist. Oh, wow. And so she works with kids who are going through divorce, separation, you know, uh, death, illness, anxiety, depression. So I've gone um, through all those. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, she never shares names or identities, but I hear smitterings of that stuff. And it's, it's like the, it's so it's, it's life changing to have someone to she saved my life, listen. Man. She and, saved my life. My therapist yeah. saved my life. I wouldn't be here yeah. if it wasn't for Susan. Yeah. So I'm glad you decided to, you know, most people, I think and a lot of people, maybe not most people don't have the courage to actually just, you know, admit they need help and get it, you know, to, to varying degrees. Like we all yeah. have different degrees of that. So, well, the, you know, the, the reality that I was facing at that time is like, I get help or I die. What's it? That's what, those are your choices right now. What do you want to do? Yeah. And I don't think my dad would be very proud of me if I killed myself. So no um thanks for sharing that it's really you know um really touching and um uh, is it takes a lot of courage to share this stuff you know so other people can learn from it um and what about on the flip side yeah the, Proud, the positives, proudest moment yeah oh uh, i don't know um Proudest moments, probably also not necessarily business related. There's so many little things that we're doing at our company every day. You know, we're celebrating some, some win. 
But I think probably one of the proudest things that I've ever done on the personal side too is, um, you know, I was a mentor to a kid named Patrick. Um, his mom died of cancer in 2012, mm -hmm. December 8th, 2012. And Patrick was 13 at the time. And um, basically, you know, like I was just there for him and he graduated high school. How did you know him? Through a charity. There's a charity in Los Angeles called Walk With Sally. And um, the founder, Nick, he had lost his mom to cancer when he was 13. And he's like, I wish I just had somebody. So I heard about this charity. I was like, I got to do this, right? My dad had been dead for five years. I was like, I got to do this. Get matched up with Patrick. You know, it was like instantly we became buddies. And uh, then his mom died. And then I was like, you know, I got to got to help this kid. I got to be there for him. It wasn't always easy. You know, he went through some really, really dark times as well, but he graduated high school. And then, um, you know, in next month in February, I don't know when this podcast is going to air, but, uh, end of February, he turns 21. I just turned 40 and we've been talking about celebrating our, his 21st and my 40th together since he was 13 years old. Hmm. So, you know, we're finally going to be able to do that. That's awesome. So, yeah. And then he's a great guy. Great, <clears throat> great human being. Uh, I am inspired by him constantly. What about from the team? I know you're probably a lot uh, very proud about as far as the culture and hiring and the team. Is there something you can talk about as far as a celebration you did with the team or a milestone of the team as far as culture goes? Oh, man. Um, it's hard to say because there's so many little things that they do that always like. What do you do to celebrate? Proud of. Like with the team? Um, and it could be maybe on a monthly or quarterly or yearly basis. What, what things, you know, you always hear that some companies they'll ring a bell if something happens or what, I don't know if there's a internal celebration or Slack channel or something you do to celebrate certain wins internally. Um, it's usually revolves around food. Okay. <laughs> so we do like a lunch, um, cakes, like they always go out for beers. The, the culture is way different here in Mexico. So like going out for beers with your boss is like unheard of, but I love it when they get together, when they go have fun together, mm -hmm. you know, cause they're so tight. It's rare, you know, that you have any organization of 30 plus people and everybody gets along that there's not clicks, right? Everybody in our office gets along. And while I might not always be invited to go to the celebrations, it does make me really happy when it's Friday and you know, all the, the, the ladies are getting ready to go out and the guys are like, you know, planning the bar that they're going to all go to and they all go together. Yeah. Like to me, kind of like you built like a family. Exactly. Right. And I've said that, you know, in, in our meetings in the past, I was like, we are the band of misfit toys. Like we are, if you've always felt like you're an outsider, that things don't have to be the way that everybody else in society tells you it has to be. If you're looking for that place to call home, like this is it. This is your family. And we've created that. Chris, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out dudeagency.io. Anywhere else we should point people towards online. Uh, dude agency. I mean, our Facebook page and our Instagram page always have fun videos too. So, you know, we have a full-time video marketing team. So they're always coming up with some cool stuff. Like for example, one of my favorite videos we ever did was uh, real Mexicans eat fake tacos. So they eat Taco Bell for the fa first time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really fun one. Okay. We'll have to check that out. Link up that, that video somewhere. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Everyone check out dudeagency.io. Thanks again. Thank you, Dr. Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.